gentlemen, you are good to go to start your presentation. Uh, you, yeah, you're on now, yes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ganeshan, and uh, with me is Ganesh. Yeah, we'll, we'll get started. Thanks a lot for uh, giving us this opportunity to make the presentation to you uh, remotely. We are making this presentation in association with CLRA, Government of India, Environment Technology Research Laboratory. Are you able to hear me? Hello? Are you, are you all able to hear me? You bet. We can hear you just fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have structured this presentation like this. We'll start with, we'll introduce ACR technology. Advanced Immobilized Cell Reactor Technology, and we'll uh, explain a case study, TNPL, which is Tamil Nadu uh, Papers Limited. Uh, it's a government uh, undertaking. Uh, and then we'll uh, explain the reasons for the success of this uh, TNPL's uh, sewage treatment plant. Then we'll show a validation of our uh, uh, technology as well as our services from the client and then uh, we'll raise a few important thought-provoking questions and give a few suggestions for RFP. Okay, we'll get started now. Yeah. Let's try to understand the basics of our technology. Ganesh will explain the technology now, then I'll uh, move ahead with the rest of the presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ganesh here. Uh, why we advocate the ASR technology as compared to the conventional technologies like the activated sludge or MPR or those sort of technologies? Our ASR technology it delivers the, any level of purity of treated water. Let's say you have to discharge to the sea or river, or you need to reuse it. Any 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 kind of treated water, our ASR technology can treat. We can design based on the purity of treated water that is required. And the second plus point is the investment, the initial investment that's going to be much, much lower than the other conventional technologies that are existing right now. Not only the investment, even the operating cost, that's also going to be much, much lower. Third point, which is very, very key thing, that is, this is digest the organic sludge completely. So there's uh, not going to be any sludge handling issues which is a bit of a headache everywhere where there are sewage treatment plants. And we don't use any chemicals at all, except in case of uh, industrial effluents. But here, the, in case of sewage, we don't use any chemicals at all. It's going to be full and full 100% biological treatment. So, sorry, can you, can you just, can, sorry, can you just back up about 30 seconds of what you were saying? Because we lost audio for a minute, and I apologize. OK, OK, yeah. Uh, uh, it, it digests organic sludge completely, so there is the sludge handling issues are completely avoided in this technology. The next point was the chemicals. There is no need of adding any chemicals at all. It's fully biological treatment, except in case of the industrial effluents where we may need to do add some chemicals. So avoiding chemicals, it saves money, minimizes pollution, sludge handling is minimized. Those sort of advantages are there. The next one is the space available. This ASR technology uses very, very little space. And any irregular shape, not going to not fire a rectangle, any irregular shape that can be used. I can show you an example in one of the later slides where a very odd-shaped uh, area was used for a very large uh, STP plant. And while doing maintenance, we need not shut down the whole plant. Let's say if the, if the plant is going to be a 5 MLD plant, we need not shut down the whole 5 MLD plant while doing any maintenance. We can just do it in a phased manner. So the plant will keep on working and the, the rest of the thing can be maintained easily. And the next one is it's modular. The technology itself is modular. 
so it can be scaled up easily so you may just design for a very near future you need not design for a very long time let's say for the next 20 years or so it can be scaled up very very easily at any point of time the next one is the power, uh, power failure power failure is some of the problems which are there in the developing countries so it can withstand power cuts it can be it can be switched off when it is not required at all the last point is the technology is guaranteed by the government of india research lab so it's having a guarantee from the government of india itself apart from our company so about the uh, advanced immobilized cell reactor technology this was the, as uh, told earlier this was developed by the government of uh, india's environmental technology research lab it has both fluidized bed as well as fixed bed there are two reactors which i will show in the latter slide it has both fluidized and fixed bed and both of them contain an unique activated carbon catalyst the bacteria are immobilized in the pores of the carbon catalyst that's why it's the name the advanced immobilized cell reactor here the dead bacteria they are automatically getting replaced with new ones in the pores so uh, the treatment is highly efficient in this case it integrates biological and chemical oxidation in a single reactor itself then both air and liquid counter current liquid and air streams allow simultaneous oxidation as well as desorption and the organics are oxidized by compressed air that is set from the bottom the reactors and there are many variations of implementation there are many very variations that have been continuously being developed based on the client specifications as well as based on the market needs so this this is a 3d perspective view of the acr reactor uh, this is a tall column which is packed with activated carbon this is just a fixed bed reactor this is not a fluidized one this is a fixed bed reactor this activated carbon are immobilized with chemo autotrophs that's the bacteria chemo autotrophs then oxygen is sent through compressed air an activated carbon it maintains its activity through it activated carbon is not washed out in this process that's a big advantage of this and as i told earlier this case here this has evolved into a suit of technologies like fluidized immobilized uh, reactor beds the case here the other one was a fixed bed this one is a fluidized bed this FICC, FICO and EACR, FAICR and EACR, they are generally used in STPs and ETPs commonly. They are fully biological. The next ones, FACO and EACR, they are mostly used in industrial effluent treatment plants. FACO, as we may be knowing, fenton activated carbon catalytic oxidation. They are used in ETPs like uh, leather industry or something where inorganic chemicals are required. And EACR, which is the more latest one, that's a enzyme immobilized cell reactor. They are used in palm oil effluents, which are very, very high COD effluents that are very, very difficult to treat. And these are some of the 3D views of the three main reactors that will be used in the STP process as it is. The first one is the anaerobic reactor. Anaerobic, as you may use all, you all know, it is completely devoid of any air. So the treatment is going to be anaerobic. And there is a pipe you can see at the top. So the water is, the raw sewage is going to go from the pipe to the bottom and is going to slowly rise up the anaerobic reaction is going to take place within this reactor and is going to have a hopper bottom as you can see uh, in the 3d view here and from the anaerobic it will go to the FACR reactor that will be very similar to anaerobic reactor in design but the difference between main difference between anaerobic and FACR will be there will be air that is going to be sent through the FACR reactor you can see the green pipelines that are present in the FACR reactor those are all the air lines. Air is going to be sent both from the top as well as from the bottom. And activated carbon catalyst is going to be filled at the hopper bottom of this FACR reactor. It's going to be fluidized. It's going to be kept in fluidized motion through the air. And from this FACR reactor, the last stage of treatment is the AACR reactor. That's going to be the fine treatment where very, very difficult to treat uh, contaminants are going to be fine polished and the treated water is going to come out of the AACR reactor. Again, in AACR reactor, this is a fixed bed reactor. Here again, there will be two levels of air lines. So air is going to be continuously passed through the air lines and uh, activated carbon along with uh, different grades of stones, pebbles are going to be placed in this reactor. And this is going to be the final stage of treatment of the uh, STP as it is. So right now, I would like to show you some uh, models which we have right now, so you can get an idea of uh, how these reactors will look like.
can you all see this uh, uh, model i can i'm showing here hello you can see it <clears throat> Can, can you see the model which I am showing? Yes, we can. Yeah, okay. This is this is circular, circular model. This is the uh, anaerobic reactor which I which I told you just now. And the same thing in rectangular form is this model. This is done in acrylic. This is just a small bench scale model which we have done. So you can see the internals also in this. How the internal structures will be there and everything. Similarly, we have the same model for the other reactors also. So I can just quickly show them so that we can move on. This is the FAACR reactor, which is similar in design to the anaerobic reactor. And this is the AACR reactor. This is just a square shape. There will not be any copper bottom on it. So moving on. So the key features of the AACR technology, as I told you earlier, this can conform to any rigorous specifications. Any any kind of specifications you we can design based on the specifications. It's even fit for human touch. You can use it even for flushing. To that level, we can do the treatment. Uh, I'll just have to uh, pause you for a moment. Where your desktop isn't coming through. Um, we have your PowerPoint here in the room, though. So if you'd just uh, like us to advance the slides here, you can go ahead and stop sharing your desktop, and we'll just uh, continue with watching the PowerPoint here in the room. OK. OK, just a minute. Can you please share? So I'm sorry, we have now seem to have lost audio. Can you just wait one moment, please? Yeah. We could all sing a song. No. And you're back. Do you, you can start again? There we go. Do we need to share it again? No, this is good. Just keep going. We're at salient features. Yeah, the salient features of ACR technology. Uh, it can conform to any rigorous specifications, as I told earlier, and it's cost effective. Told earlier, it's including investment, operation, maintenance, everything is very, very simple and very, very cost effective. And again, as I told earlier, there is no consumption of any chemicals at all, it's fully biological. And the power consumption is going to be very, very minimal. There's going to be only one or two pumps and one blower, that's all, that's it. And and the operation, the, there's, the operation is going to be very, very easy. The one of, in one of the installations that is present in Chennai, even the polytechnic students are operating this technology. So it's going to be very simple. And as I told earlier, it's modular and scalable. And there is no degradation in performance even over years. Even for 10 to 15 years, the plant has been, the first plant has been performing very well without any degradation in the performance. The last, the key point is the technology that is guaranteed from the government of India, as I told earlier. And the key benefits, again, minimize in investment. There's no, going to be no water at all, no mosquitoes. Saves a lot of space. The sludge is going to be fully digested, so there is no need for sludge handling at all. It's a very, very modern technology. Investment is good for a long term. And as I told earlier, depending on the purpose, what purpose you are going to use the treated water, we can do the design based on that. So the cost is going to be only based on the level to which we are going to treat it. And these are all the various applications of ASI technology. It can be used anywhere. It can be used in domestic sewage treatment, commercial, industrial bioeffluent treatment, industrial effluent treatment like uh, car wash, tannery, textile effluent, etc. So various uh, improvements of the technology can be used in these kinds of uh, applications. 
and the small space requirement which was the one of the important point which we told many many times the space saved itself can pay for the stp uh, at the end and 30% area can be saved as some of the tanks can be built underground and they can be even made in tired formats and power saving can be done because of space saving the complete plant can be built in basement and there are new materials of construction that are uh, being explored like ferro cement zinc alum etc that can be easily prefabricated just plug and play sort of thing that can speed up the process of execution so this is one plant which i told earlier that's the odd shaped area that's for about 34 mld it was just built in about 0.7 hectares so it's a very very odd shape this is not a very regular shape so this is uh, a model for you and this is a typical schematic diagram for a sewage treatment plant so initially it's going to be the raw sewage that's going to be screened it comes to a collection tank where it's uh, settled for a few hours then it goes to the anaerobic reactor which i showed uh, just now then next is the faacr reactor which is going which is the fluidized one the next is the aacr reactor which is the fixed bed reactor from the asia it goes to a treated water tank and depending on the reuse what the purpose of reuse or discharge tertiary treatment may be needed that's why we have put it as optional yeah okay so, uh, thank you ganesh uh, now uh, let me take over uh, i'll make a small presentation about the case study of uh, a sewage treatment plant in tamil nadu news prints limited tnpl This is a six-year-old uh, sewage treatment plant uh, owned by the government, state government. Sewage volume treated is 1,000 meter cube per day, one mld. The sewage is uh, from the factories, staff quarters, and guest houses. The purpose is to reuse the treated water for gardening. And over the six years, there has been no degradation in performance. This is one of the important points. Most of the sewage treatment plants the world over, if you see. Uh, uh, the parameters that you get one year after uh, uh, commissioning will not be the same as what you got immediately after. As time goes on, uh, it will keep degrading in performance. Whereas with this technology, it doesn't degrade in performance at all, even over a five-year, ten-year, fifteen-year period. Uh, I can show you some of the parameters we took, uh, we obtained recently. This was treated for a, a moderate specifications, client specifications where. For example, BOD they wanted 100, whereas the treated water they get is 23. COD they wanted 250, whereas what they get is 66. And they have not specified anything for suspended solids, whereas we have been able to get 10. Now let me uh, take you through a, a video presentation. So the video will take over now. Uh, hello, Gannison. Uh, the the video uh, isn't coming through on our end. So what we're going to do is we will uh, share it uh, on the uh, live stream for everybody to view later. Okay. Okay. So Thank we'll you. continue. Yes. Continue, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the reasons for success of uh, TNPL sewage treatment plant are uh, they. Right in the beginning, they decided to treat only to the extent that is required, no more, no less. So they have been able to contain the cost. Uh, they decided that they would avoid sludge handling hassles by by asking us to digest the sludge completely. In the last six years, uh, sludge has been removed only once in six years. Uh, and of course, from such a small plant. Uh, you are not going to get uh, a large large amount of uh, sludge so that is the uh, beauty of this technology uh, it uses i mean they decided to go in for a modern futuristic technology when they were evaluating the options they had and that's why they uh, went ahead with our technology uh, <clears throat> the technology being modern modular and scalable operations and maintenance becomes very easy for people because you know you once people get trained to use one module it's the same uh, you know whether they you have 10 modules or 100 modules uh, 
uh, operations and maintenance the same. And they also desired separate engineering from procurement and construction in the sense that they took only the engineering from us and they decided that they would do the procurement and construction by themselves, uh, which, uh, of course, we don't know their exact cost, but they had uh, told us that they have been able to contain the cost substantially by do going in for this. Uh, so maybe there are some takeaways from this case study for Westside. Okay, uh, I'll show you a few photographs of some of the plant. This is Cosmos Seafoods. Uh, effluent treatment plant, industrial effluent treatment plant in Tema, Ghana. Uh, this is uh, to treat fish processing plants effluents. As you may all know, uh, fish stings from a distance uh, within a short time and effluent, fish effluent stings even worse. And within a day, the whole place will be full of stink. Whereas we, uh, okay, I'll show you later. The one that you see on the right-hand side, <clears throat> which is a clarifier, that is some of the, many of the uh, unit operations will not be applicable in the case of sewage treatment plants like yours. So this is uh, one of the views of uh, the effluent treatment plant. Um, yeah. So this is another view. You can see on the left-hand side, the uh, raw effluent and the right-hand side, the treated water. Uh, on the very first day of, just one day before commissioning. These are the parameters. BOD of uh, effluent was 2,640 as compared to about 500 to 600 in the case of sewage, uh, 250 to 300 in the case of sewage. TOD was 4,280 as compared to about 500 to 600 in the case of sewage. Suspended solids is about 1,760 compared to uh, maybe about 300 in the case of sewage. TDS doesn't really matter so much. Oil and grease is 533. Typically, it is about 30, 40 in the case of sewage. And total coliforms, coliforms will be there in both cases. Probably coliforms may be more in the case of sewage. You can see the extent of uh, treatment. Uh, it has come down to 38, 98 from 2000, from 2640, it has come down to 98. Similarly, COD has come down from 4280 to 130. Suspended solids has come down from 1,760 to 116. Uh, oil and grease has come down from 533 to less than 3. And the coliforms, total coliforms has come down from 70,000 to 1,100. Uh, so this is the validation from the client that we got. Uh, let me just read some essential parts of what they have said. The, ETP has been performing to our specifications right from the date of commissioning till date. That is, we got it uh, recently only for, uh, uh, you know, as required by you, uh, without any problems. And there is no smell in the treated water or in the factory environment. Mind you, this is uh, fish processing effluent. Econo Services has been keeping in touch with us continuously inquiring about the performance of the ETP and asking whether we need any help. <clears throat> we expect to be ready with additional effluence shortly and we are in discussions with them to commission the final phase of the plant also as soon as we are ready. Since the second phase is identical to the first phase, being a modular and scalable technology, we hope to be able to have the entire capacity requirements the ETP commissioned in the coming months. We would recommend Echno services and their AACR suite of technologies. This is what uh, Cosmos Seafoods, the client, the general manager has uh, said. <clears throat> and I'm, uh, we, we also have, uh, we have normally three uh, kinds of uh, stages. First is proof of concept stage. Whenever we design, design any technology, which is, it's, it's done on a bench scale in a lab. And then we do something like this, you know, what you see. It's the, called the pilot scale where it's not the, you know, <clears throat> uh, MLD or even KLD range. It's, this is a four or five MLD kind of, a KLD kind of a, a plant. So we prove it from the bench level to this level. And once it is proven at this level, we take it to the next level. So this is a plant that we have. Uh, we, you know, uh, in Malaysia, it has been uh, one such uh, 
min scale model has been set up now because uh, Malaysian government has uh, several projects and one of our associates there wanted us to set it up. So we are looking at uh, using this min scale model, I mean, uh, uh, this uh, pilot scale model to demonstrate its capability for sewage treatment, for chicken uh, slaughterhouse uh, uh, effluent treatment and things like that. Same thing, anaerobic reactor, the pilot model and FACR. Uh, the one on the left hand side is the AACR from top and on the right hand side is the AACR with the pipe pipelines and these are the stage wise treated water from the from a uh, sewage treatment in Malaysia on the left hand side is the untreated water and the right hand side is the treated water the others in between are the stage wise treated water the parameters that they got from this pilot plant are uh, here from a BOD of 233.5 it has uh, got treated to a level of 5.4 COD of 444 to 32 I mean in case it is required it can be uh, improved even further suspended solids of 122 to 1 oil and freeze of 27.3 to less than 0.1 the important thing here is <clears throat> pilot plants will never perform as well as the original plants because in the case of original plants we would build them to 6 meters and 5 meters high whereas these pilot plants are only 1 and 1.2 1.4 meter kind of uh, height height is required for proper uh, treatment however because it is only for uh, you know uh, demonstrating the technology and we need to be able to transport the pilot plants from one place to another we build them to manageable heights so with the pilot plant, if you are able to get these kinds of uh, treatment with uh, a regular plant, we'll be able to get much, much better kind of uh, uh, levels of treatment. Here we have a comparison of AACR with other technologies. I'm leaving it for you because, you know, you have a copy of this. I, I'm not going to go into that, but uh, let me just run through quickly whether it is the area and height or manpower requirement or uh, material replacement or uh, chemical require, requirement, there is no chemical that is required, for example, in the case of uh, sway treatment uh, or sludge disposal or uh, um, odor or uh, ventilation requirement or what, I mean, there are so many parameters which have been given. Whatever are the uh, parameters, our technology compares extremely favorably compared to uh, almost all other conventional technologies and here is the list of uh, clients who have uh, you know sway for sewage as well as industrial effluent <clears throat> these are some of the photographs uh, about our company we are a 14 year old uh, company <clears throat> um, we have authored an ebook on all about wastewater treatment which has been published by geostar publishing usa and we have been providing consultancy to uh, wastewater industry professionals through this Geostar publishing. We have identified the concept of decentralized sewage treatment plant as ideal for developing countries, not only developing countries, countries where underground sewerage lines have not been laid. <clears throat> because that constitutes the biggest cost uh, in a sewage treatment. If uh, a sewage treatment plant costs uh, $15, underground uh, uh, sewerage costs about $85, that's the kind of uh, investment that is required. So we will be able to substantially reduce on the underground sewerage by going for decentralized concepts to the extent that you can save about 50% to 70% of your investment completely by going in for decentralized concepts. And <clears throat> We identified the AACR suite of technologies as ideal for such a decentralized concept. We have a panel of experts who we call upon as and when required. We have signed a MOU with uh, Water and Sanitation for Africa, which is a body recognized by UN as uh, promoting water and sanitation facilities in the whole of Africa. And we have signed up with them to uh, take our technology to the whole of Africa. Recently, we have signed a MOU with the Liberian government. Just before the Ebola struck, 
uh, you know, we had signed the MOU and uh, now uh, after the Ebola related issues have settled down, we expect to go ahead with the project. And we have also submitted proposals in Colombia, in Africa and even in China. Uh, we are, uh, we have set up the pilot plant in our, uh, for R&D in Malaysia and we expect a few projects in Malaysia. As I mentioned, our technology will be uh, guaranteed by both the Environment Tech Research Techn uh, Laboratory of the Government of India as well as by our own company. Uh, we just want to raise a few <coughs> important questions for you. Uh, I mean, in media, you want to go in for one month, and then like this, it's very little in the land, or multiple diseases like this, very little in the land. There are, uh, uh, you know, I had a very serious advantage of the diseases like this. If you use it, you can put it in the land, very little in the land, and then you can use it. How many such diseases, diseases like this, very little in the land, you want to have, and where? Maybe the four, five, ten, whatever it is. And then, uh, do you need solutions from multiple vendors or the different uh, diseases like this? Or do you, are you going to blame it for a single thing? Solution from a single vendor. So that's another question that you have to take. Do you want suggestion reaction and transportation treatment and disposal or complete digestion? Why do you want these cars as well as so that's another question? We want to claim for biogas generation and, uh, uh, I mean, this is a viable option, so these are some of the questions that we have to take. And, uh, do you want to claim for the secondary level, the treatment or all the tertiary level, and to what the situation is? Only the third level of the regulations don't over-specify. I mean, many people, uh, uh, even the, the uh, US, if the treaty to what was going to be let out to the sea, they are going to ask you to treat it to the very fine level and then let it into the sea. Because sea water water only contains a certain contaminants. If it's enough, you don't want to use the sea. That's about it. So you don't want to treat it fine level at that water. Um, uh, so depending on the end application, you have to find out about the local applicable laws and really what we need is to provide. Thank you. 
we we're just taking more wherever we go, and we'll be convening in about 15 minutes. Thank you.